So sometimes when you go in a pine forest, all the trees are just immaculate. You can't find any pine sap or any pine resin, but not today. Look at that, it's absolutely covered in pine sap. So what we're looking for today isn't pine sap, it's pine resin. Sap is when it comes out the tree and it's still really runny and tacky. Resin is when it goes hard, it almost looks like a crystal. That's what we're looking for, that's the incense. This tree has a bit of an example of everything on it. We've got the really runny stuff, which almost looks like clear honey, which is also a good sign that the tree's healthy because it's clear. If it's like yellow and discolored, it can mean there's an infection in the tree. Pine sap is actually the tree's defense system, so when the tree gets wounded, often when another tree falls and strikes its bark and splits it, it'll fill with pine resin and that protects it from infection. It's a lot like the white blood cells in our body. And when you're in the bush, if you injure yourself, because it's sticky, antibacterial and antifungal, you can actually use it as like a makeshift plaster until you get proper medical help. So this tree's got a lot of bad examples on it. It's got lots of really tacky, runny sap that's coming out, which is no good. It does burn and it smells fantastic, but it's really hard to harvest and you're just gonna get absolutely sticky and filthy. So another amazing use of pine sap is in the kind of bushcraft world and you actually collect the pine sap and you melt it on a fire with animal fat and wood ash and that will make what's called pitch. Now, they often use it for binding. If you get an arrowhead and you put the flint in the stick and then you wrap it with twine or sinew, you can actually then add the pitch. So it's kind of like a black glue and you put that on and when that dries, it dries extremely hard and it's one of nature's best glues that you can make in the field. We're not doing any of these fancy things, not today. Maybe we'll show you one day, but today is about incense. So this really runny stuff that you can see on this tree is no good, it's not what we're looking for today. So we're gonna try find some of the crystalline, harder stuff. So we found a really good example here of when the sap turns crystalline and is now resin. The problem is that this is around a wound. And I know that sounds silly because that's where the sap comes from and that's where a lot of it forms. But it's really not fair on the tree to go pulling these bits of resin out because that's essentially the scab of the tree. So if you had a wound and you had a scab and someone pulled it off, you're not gonna be very happy about it. It exposes you to infection and the tree has to do the whole cycle again and uses energy and all the rest. On this tree, you can actually see the inner part of the tree because the bark has been so damaged. So we will not harvest from that because we risk the tree getting an infection and we don't want that. So what we're really looking for is where it runs down the tree because it often gathers on the bark and it's not gonna cause any damage if we collect that. And right down here below the wound, there's the perfect bit of pine resin. So that's what we're gonna collect. So in order to collect pine sap, we'd always recommend that you make a little scooper because the stuff is extremely sticky. It can often look crystalline and like it's resin, but sometimes you just poke it and all of a sudden it just bursts and you get covered in completely sticky pine sap. And it is a nightmare to get off. So I'm just gonna use a stick to make a little scraper so we can scrape it off to kind of avoid the sticky fingers. It needs to be really strong wood so it doesn't snap, which is why I've used the center. This was like a Y piece like that, and I've split it in half. So this is really strong in the middle. And then we can just scrape up the tree with that. It sometimes helps to put a bit of a groove in it, just down the center. It just means the pine sap will actually go into the middle rather than just jumping off the side. Or at least that's the idea, but we'll see. So we've got our tool for scooping out the pine sap and of course, we forgot to bring a tin. We usually bring a little metal tin that we can put the pine sap in so you can put it in your pocket and then you're not gonna get all sticky. But we forgot. But as a backup plan, we're gonna just peel one of these little platelets off the pine bark and we can just sit it on that like a wee plate and walk it back to the van. So you want one that comes off as easy as that because it's not exposing the inner bark of the tree at all. So we're just gonna use that as a little plate to put the pine sap on. So all I've done is break this piece of bark to fit the shape of the tree a bit better because you don't want it being all off and then when you scrape a bit, it just falls between the tree and the bark. So this is what we're aiming for. See how crystalline it is? It's kind of like a pale yellow color, that's quite normal. Uh, often it's white as well. If it's really yellow, then it might smell a bit cheesy because it could be an infection in the tree. Here's an example of a bit we don't want to get because it's yellow. That could be smelly, it could be fighting an infection in that, so you wouldn't click that. It's too runny anyway, but I just wanted to point out the color change. So all we're going to do is take this scrapey tool and scrape up the pine sap to scoop it onto this piece of bark. So here we go. It helps to just wiggle it a little bit to free it. Some of it will come off real easy, some of it won't. But it's good to see that it's all kind of crystalline and it's not just squidging when I press on it. Oh, <laughs> I dropped the load. You're never going to catch all of it. So here we have a wee sample of the pine resin from that tree. Of course you want to rummage through it and pull out all the pine needles and any little bits of bark 
or if you see any yellow bits as well, take them out like proper horrible yellowy pussy kind of colour. That looks nice and healthy and should burn really nice. So next we're going to take this back to the van. Actually, we're probably going to hunt out a little bit more of it because there's so much of it here. But then we're going to take it back to the van and we're going to put it on our oil burner and show you how we incense our van. We were just walking back to the van and we spotted this. Loads of drips down onto the floor. And this is actually the first process in insects being preserved in amber. So when we found like mosquitoes from dinosaur times in amber, this is exactly how it's happened. It's dripped onto the creature and then it's dyed and been preserved. So I know initially it looks a little bit dodgy, but we can explain. So we've got two ways in which we burn it as an incense. So one method is with the soapstone oil burner that we've got, and the other is with a spoon that we found from a charity shop. So first of all, we're gonna warm up our oil burner. So get a brand new candle on. So then all we're gonna do is drop a little bit of this pine resin in. You don't need a whole lot, that'll do, just a couple of pinches. And uh, yeah, as that heats up, that will slowly melt down and become liquid and then it'll start to produce a vapour. And that vapour is absolutely fantastic, it smells incredible. So while we wait for the oil burner to heat up, we're going to show you the other method, which is using a spoon. Um, you don't want to use a spoon that you use in the kitchen because it's going to char it. So we found this one in a charity shop for like 20p and it was perfect. We were well chuffed when we found this spoon because it's got a wooden handle, which is almost essential because as you heat the spoon up, obviously the heat is going to transfer up the metal, so wooden handle's great. You can also wrap a spoon with like string back and forth and then glue it. You just you need something to protect yourself from the heat. So it's as simple as dropping a wee bit on the spoon and then just holding the lighter under it. It takes a wee while but it produces far more smoke and scent than the oil burner does. Whoa. Gotta be careful, it can spit a little bit. So as you can see, the pine resin's already turned into a liquid. And you can see the vapour coming off. And honestly, it smells so good. It's like, I don't know, it seems, it's more than a smell. It's, it kind of just makes you feel safe and happy. It probably roots back to when we like had fires as cavemen and it was kind of like a safety thing. But also if you then take the heat off when it's vaporising like that, and give it a blow. Gently, of course, because if you blow that out, it will scald and burn anything it touches. It is extremely hot. The scent that comes off this is extremely relaxing. It does look extremely dodgy, so you might want to make sure you've got your window covered when you're doing it, but it's as innocent as it gets. And it really does fill the van with such an incredible smell. It's like having a fire, but just the very best smells of the fire. So, of course, with YouTube, you only get to see what we're doing. You can't actually smell it. But it is probably my favourite, in, in fact it is my favourite incense and it's probably one of my favourite smells. I'm going to try and describe the scent as best as I can to you. It obviously smells like a pine forest but it's also got this warm, deep, sweet and sort of citrusy smell. And it's interesting because when you go to different forests and collect the pine sap it often smells different. So we've got some from Scotland and we've got some from the Lake District and we know it's a different one because it smells totally different. Sometimes it will look fine and you light it and it will smell all the lovely smells but then there's just like a cheesy tone and that means you've got a bad batch. <laughs> We're good with this one, it smells absolutely brilliant. Uh, we caution that spoon will stay hot for absolutely ages so make sure and put it on something metal. For me I'm just going to put it on a spatula for now. So in theory all this resin that we've collected should all smell fantastic. Now we said about colour because you do get the cheesy ones and they tend to be kind of greeny, yellowy colours. But a colour that is okay is amber. Things that are kind of orange, they tend to smell the best. And then here, we've got this piece. And honestly, it, it looks like amber. And it came off a tree probably a couple of years ago now. And that is our favourite, most prized piece because it smells so good. And yeah, it's orange. So don't be scared of orange, just be scared of kind of pussy yellows and greens and stuff like that. So the spoon is the best method to just fill the whole fan with the fantastic scent and it's also the best method if you're fighting anxiety and honestly you should give it a shot. It is one of the easiest and most incredible ways of curing your anxiety. It chills you right out. So that's the best way but if you're sat in your evening reading a book and you don't want to be sat there burning a spoon then the oil burner is the way to do it. So this is the stuff we've had for years that we keep using but we're going to add some new stuff now that we've found more. Now it's good to store it in wood because wood lets moisture pass through it so if there's still some damp bits it will actually dry out while it's in there. I should mention that 
as the pine resin burns away it leaves behind any impurities and also the gum from the tree so you actually need to clean these out now and then you can't just burn it away to nothing and keep adding uh, the best way is to blow your candle out let it cool but not go cold and when it's still warm get a good bundle of tissue and just wipe and it'll come out in one perfect smear and that piece of tissue that you've just covered in the pine resin that's left over in the gum is an incredible fire lighter, so it's worth holding onto them. You can also mix it with scents, so something we often do with the, the oil burner is put pine needle oil or frankincense oil, just other essential oils in it, and it will just make an incredible combination of smells in your van. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that, that's a little sneak peek on how we collect pine sap from trees without injuring them and turn it into incense, and maybe one day we'll show you how to make it into perfumes and pitch pine and all this other stuff you can do with it, because it's a fascinating material. And it's just all in all a great experience because you get to go wandering through the woods to find your incense and it's free and it like I say it's my favorite one it is my favorite frankincense and the rest are really expensive and they have air miles flying all the way from the Middle East so with this you can just go in your back garden and get an incense and it is excellent 